Hi, Taurus. I was actually sort of nervous to do your reading because um, the, because the tower was the first card that came out in the last reading. <laughs> so many of you commented when that card comes out, you just put it right back in the deck. Well, this first card that came out, and this is why you guys had to have that tower moment last month. Because uh, you were making, I'm sorry. Um, because you were making room in your life to do great, amazing, wonderful things. And the problem is with when we get those tower cards or when we get those change and transition cards and we brace ourselves and we say, all right, if something's going to change, then it's going to change. Um we still, I feel like it's almost as if we expect for, because we're bracing ourselves, that it's going to be easier. And um, now things are going to start moving pretty quickly for you guys. The things that you've been working on, the things that you've been making, the things that you've been manifesting for a while, are it's almost as if, like the veil clears, you know, like there's no more fog. It's not foggy anymore because now you can clearly see that what you've been working on is finally coming into fruition. Like things are starting to happen and probably a lot of it has to do with the fact that you guys just were kind of like, I'm not going to force it anymore. I'm not going to try and I'm not going to like fix things that keep breaking. I'm not going to like try and fix this thing if it breaks again, right? Like you stopped doing that. And then the tower came down. Because the universe was like, finally, you heard. And so now with the magician, the eight of wands and the eight of pentacles, you can start manifesting stuff. So, um... During, I do want to mention, like, while we're doing this, that the self-alignment course that I'm giving on October 5th, which is next weekend, um, we talk about all of the ways that we hold ourselves back. There are, like, six particular ways that stop us from being able to manifest new things into our lives. And with these six things, if you, if, you know, if you go through these six things and you really teach yourself to be consciously aware that you're doing them, it's amazing how you can open your mind up and start manifesting things and it just sort of like shows up. You don't even have to try anymore. You just have a thought process, which is what you're supposed to do anyways because you guys are master manifestors. You make things, but here's the thing is if you start to make it and it freaks you out that things are going so well, and you're like, oh my God, too good to be true. I have to stop. Er, like things can't go this well in my life is what I'm hearing, right? So we have the hanged man and then the five of pentacles. You get right back to that. And this is, this is what I'm trying to teach everybody in my self-alignment courses that I'm giving. How to get out of the lack mentality. How to realize that there's more than enough to go around for everyone. Whether it comes to relationships, people, situations, jobs, houses, money. You have to stop competing with other people and then you have to start competing with yourself. And when you're competing with yourself, you're just, you're just making yourself better. See what I mean, Taurus? Queen of Pentacles. So here's the thing, though. There could be another earth sign or a Pisces, but this, this other earth sign could be a Virgo with the magician up here. Um, but there could be another person in your life that makes you feel like you're on the outside looking in, right? Five of Pentacles. 
And this is what puts you in pause. But here's the thing is nobody can actually make you feel this way. Somebody can treat you poorly or block you and then you get to choose how you feel about it. If you have to wallow in it for a couple of days or a day or two or whatever, by all means, feel bad about the situation. Grieve. You all, we all have to be able to get a chance to grieve in life. But the longer you stay in the Five of Pentacles, the harder it is to manifest anything. Because it's resistance. Right? So. I just realized that my Amazon TV remote was sitting right there. This is real life, guys. This is my real life, by the way. This is not a, this is not like a set stage, studio, studio setting. Nope, real life. Let's see what this magician is. Okay. I saw one card that it could really be, but here we go. Ah. Either way. Did you know that you have all the power in this situation in your life? Now, here's the thing. When you have all the power, that means you can shift the energy. And that's where free will comes into play, right? You can choose to stay in a hanged man position, or you can choose to pull yourself out of that lack mentality and decide that you do deserve better and start doing things in your life that reflect uh, a feel-good mentality and not a lack mentality. Like, you feel good. You do things every single day for yourself that make you feel good. Right? You shift the energy. You make that wheel start turning. The way divine timing comes into play where we don't have control is source, God, the universe. They're going to bring it to you when it's for your highest good your best and highest good. That's divine timing. That's where we have to sit back and say, okay, well, I started the wheel. I got things moving. I got things shifting. Now I just have to step back and wait for the universe to do it for me. If that's going to take a month, if that's going to take a year, if that's going to take a decade. I know it's going to get to me when it's supposed to get to me. As long as I do the work. And that's the thing is what you're concerned about is either, which is interesting because now we have three eights here. Eight means something to you. This is your reading. Eight, eight, and eight. The eight of swords on the eight of wands, that's where, this is where you can get yourself in trouble. Because if you get into the eight of swords, and this is how I, this is what that self-alignment course will help pull you out of, is that eight of swords mentality not thinking it's good enough, not thinking you're going to be able to get anything, yada, 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 right? And, um, but we start to freak out because we can't see where it's going. Part of the reason why we can't see it is because I like to call her blindfolded Sally there. All she got to do is take the blindfold off and then she can see where the energy's going. But here's the thing, Taurus, is just because you can't see it actually happening in front of you and what the universe is doing behind the scenes, right, doesn't mean that you stop working. It doesn't mean that you stop trying to manifest it. It doesn't mean that you stop feeling good about life and things and stuff. Some of you 
are dealing with an Aries. Where I feel like I want to tell you, if it's not an Aries, then it's at work or something like that. Like, I want to tell you that you've got to pay attention to the details. There's something within the details of either your job or it has to do with an Aries figure in your life. Or maybe it's even with a boss. Something, you have to pay attention to the details. There's like a clue, like a message or something like that. Like you're a sign from the universe. You're missing a sign by not paying attention to the details. Okay, that's what I want to say about that one. But, so here we are, the hanged man. And everybody is human. So we all slip back into, sorry, my, the chair grabbed my hair. Just everything is happening during your reading. And now my nose itches, like, really bad. So the hanged man, and, and everybody gets to this point in their life, and, ev and, there, and everybody slips back into it too. The whole thing about being in the hanged man position in the five of pentacles is getting out of it. Yes, you may slip back into it. Everybody does. Things happen like that all the time. The key is not sitting in it, right? Or when you're in it, you learn something out of being in this position, be feeling stuck, being on pause. You learn something out of it. Um, so we have the hermit on the hanged man. You could be dealing with a Virgo, since we have the queen of pentacles over here, and we have the magician up here. That's a lot of mercury energy. Um, but we, but, um, you could also be dealing with a Pisces who's ghosted you. Um, if you're dealing with a Virgo, they're a little upside down too, is how I want to say that. Or they're, um, not entirely sure what the next step would be. They don't have the answers either. And I feel like if you're dealing with either a Virgo or a Pisces, either way, or this is just your energy where you have to take a step back and allow yourself to just be on pause. And here's the challenge. Be on pause without going to the Five of Pentacles or without feeling like you're in that state of mind because you're doing really well. Big energy shift, which is kind of what I want to call this video. Just came to me. Oh, all right. All right, all right, all right. Okay. You could also be dealing with a Capricorn. So we have all, well, we don't have you, but we have all of the earth signs. We have the, the Virgo and the Capricorn here. And of course, the Queen of Pentacles could also be you. But um, I feel like there either is a conversation with a Capricorn or there's a conversation with somebody who is very karmic to you and they're the ones that actually push you back into the Five of Pentacles. Could be an Aries, a Virgo, a Pisces, Capricorn. That's who we have here. But this, it feels like it's the conversation. It feels like there are words that are said whether it's an argument or whether it's a conversation. And that's what pushes you back into the five of pentacles where you are feeling the lack mentality again. And like I said that with when this queen of pentacles came out, nobody can actually make you feel this way. They can make you feel bad. Yes. People can be cruel. They can say nasty, nasty things. They can make you, they can say things that hurt your feelings. We'll put it that way. They can say things that hurt your feelings. But that five of pentacles, it is your job to remember that when people say nasty, mean things to you, 
which I don't understand why you would do that to an ant to a Taurus. Like, it's beyond me. Why? I mean, you guys are like the most peaceful people in the world and so patient. But some of you are patient. I've actually come across a couple of Taurians that are not patient at all. But here's the thing is when somebody says something mean, hurtful, and nasty to you, it's your job to remember that it's not the truth. Unless you really did something to make them mad and get their goat. But usually when people are being rude and mean like that, they're just projecting onto you how they feel about themselves. And I'm not saying that as like a cop out. I'm saying that as in, I feel like somebody said something to you, it puts you in a five of pentacles state, what they said to you, and I'm trying to tell you, nobody can make you feel left out. Only you can make yourself feel left out. Because you have to, rem but, and you're like, but they keep doing it. They do it all the time to me. Then it's your fault that they're still around. Why would you want to have somebody around that treats you that way? Stop it. Stop keeping people in your life that make you feel miserable. You can't manifest when you're miserable. Stop it. You see what I'm saying? And like not, it, and it's not that I think you guys are pushovers because you're not pushovers either. I just think that you let somebody get to you. Happens to the best of us. Especially when you are energetically sensitive. Happens to, you know, it's happened to me before, but I've been able to teach myself and I've been able to learn that when somebody says something to me, I have to ask myself, is that the truth? Are they telling the truth or are they saying it out of spite and vengeance or their jealousy or anger or something, right? There's got to be something. Like, it used to be so bad with me that I would let people upset me by just saying, you're so emotional. Now I'm like, you damn right I'm emotional because I'm human and I have emotions. There's nothing wrong with that. But that used to be something that was really hard for me to hear. Because uh, to me, I, it used to be a negative. There was a negative connotation to being emotional. And I would be like, I'm not emotional when I was extremely emotional. And it's okay to be, but that's what I'm saying. Like, people don't even have to call you nasty names or anything like that. They can just say something as simple as, you're really emotional. You're overly emotional. You're too emotional. And that can make you feel really bad about yourself. And so, yes, I do feel, and it could even be an air sign, but I do feel like there are some nasty words coming your direction and i want you to protect yourself protect your energy allow your allow yourself to heal and you can be vulnerable and open at the same time as having boundaries so we have the high priestess and the sun you can be open abundant healthy and happy and still have your energetic boundaries that the high priestess can teach you, right? You could also be dealing with a Leo. Then we have the Ten of Swords and the Fool. And here we go back to um, you being scared to be vulnerable and open because you go to the worst possible case scenario. You think that it's all going to be... Like, it's all going to go wrong, right? It's not. It's not going to go wrong. Not every time. But what is wrong? What is right and what is wrong? You know? Like, there's not even a such thing. It's, it doesn't exist. Right and wrong do not exist. If you perceive that something didn't turn out the way that you wanted it to, wrong. You perceive it that it didn't turn out the way that you wanted it to. And therefore, it was wrong. Maybe that was exactly the way it was supposed to turn out. Maybe it did turn out right. You just didn't like it. You don't like the way it turned out, so you thought it was wrong. Oof. 
so many major arcanas. <sighs> the star, the empress, and justice. I feel like Libra season is bringing you a lot of gifts. And I also feel like Libra season is bringing you a lot of creativity. And I want you to use both of that to your advantage right now. I want you to really tap into everything that is beautiful and creative and allow yourself to get to a place of worthiness because that's 100% what you deserve. Okay. All right, my dears. So the self-alignment course is next Saturday. Um, if you cannot be a part of the live course, I'm actually going to have the course two more times in October, but um, I don't know when yet. It might be two more times in October, but I don't know when yet. <laughs> I think it's going to be like on a Friday night and then one on a Monday night or Monday afternoon. Anyway, if you can't come to the live, you can also get it recorded. It's just going to be a really neat little workshop and um, lots of tools, lots of tools for you to manifest. The Jade Onyx Rings, which are really good healing for the heart chakra, are now available for purchase. I keep forgetting to tell everybody, but I'm really, I'm actually really excited about it. They're gorgeous. They're handmade. Like, he doesn't even use a cast for the rings to, like, make, it's just, he's amazing. Um, there's only, like, 15 available. And the, the weekly meditation and Reiki healing set, um, sessions that we're doing. If you haven't joined us for a meditation and Reiki healing session, um, please consider it. They are weekly. Usually it's on Sunday or it's on either a new moon or a full moon or it falls on a Sunday. Um, and they've been extremely powerful. You get a dose of Reiki healing in it and everything uh, has been fantastic. So... Join us for that. Um, I do ask for a small donation when you register, or a small fee when you register, just because we want to make sure that the most positive energies are in the healing circle. So I love you guys. Have a wonderful October, and I will see you for Scorpio season readings. Oh, and the love readings. Bye.